bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his soul.
that is within me. birthday they added some years ago Jesus Christ is Lord bless the Lord oh my soul and I love that Psalms 103 bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all of his benefits that's my favorite part ah, yes oh my God forget not all of his but he got some benefits it's benefit it's a benefit some benefits in praising God some benefits in worshiping God it's it's a benefit oh my goodness you think you got benefits on your job, baby? God's benefits ain't, ain't nothing compared to what God has in store. And we know that he is worthy to be right. Amen. Amen. Praise God for all of you. Thank God that you're here on tonight. God is good. Yes, he is all the time. All the time, God is good. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm glad that you all could be here on tonight. I tell you, God is just just working some things out and gets making this this Sunday school bigger and better, and it's getting bigger and better. It's getting gooder and gooder. I tell you, and God is about to open another door. You know what I was trying to I was trying to do it on YouTube, and they tell me you got to have a thousand folk. Well, they changed the rules. Ha! Woo! We been I'm I'm being split my time, so but start, we're gonna start in April. I'm gonna do the first two, first two. But if it's five, if it's four Tuesdays. I'm gonna do the first two on Facebook Live. Then I'm gonna do the last two on YouTube Live. And if it's five Tuesdays, I'm gonna do the first three on Facebook and the last two on YouTube. And if y'all want to, I'm gonna do a little preview on YouTube at eight fifteen. You know, following this session, we're gonna do that at eight fifteen. Not gonna be long. I'm just gonna say a little something. something. To let folks know that I'm coming. Ha! Ah, okay. God is good. Wow. They said I had to have a thousand subscribers. I don't have it. I have half of that. But thank God he's opening up that avenue. So that the ones that's on YouTube that want to catch me live will now be able to catch me live. <laughs> thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. That's a whole nother world. Ha! Ah, yes, Lord. It's a whole other world. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for you. God bless you all. I'm glad you're here and that you, you know, willing to take part in um, the Sunday school lesson. Thank God for each and every one of you. You just don't know how awesome it is for, you know, to see you all here every Tuesday. And a lot of y'all I see on Sundays as well. But I thank you all for what you do, what you've done, what you're doing. Amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. It's my prayer. 
And so we are going to go into this lesson. Christ, our only foundation. Christ, our own, what? You don't have no other foundation. Ain't no, no it's sinking sand. Whatever you're trying to build on is, is sinking sand. So, no, you need to build on Christ. He's the solid foundation. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to fail you. He's not going to fall under you. So, you know that He is the only, our only foundation. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, 10 through 23. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verses 10 through 23. Father, we thank you this evening for your grace, your mercy, your love and kindness. God, we thank you for how good you've been. We thank you for all the things that you've done for us just this week, just today. God, how you woke us up this morning, start us on our way, God. How you got us in our right mind. God, there may have been some things that didn't go quite well. But God, we thank you that we made it through. And we are here together once again. God, I thank you for these that people who are here. God, bless them as you see fit. But bless them, God, just for supporting me. Just for being there. Just for coming. And whatever they do to support this ministry, God, bless them indeed. God, you know what they're dealing with. You know what they're going through. You know what their issues are. God, please give them strength. Help them through Break them out. Break them through. God, I thank you because you've done it for me. I know you can do it for my brothers and my sisters. God, I thank you and I give you all the glory and the praise. God, as we go through this lesson on tonight, open up our hearts, minds, and understanding that we may receive your word and apply your word so that we will begin to understand more that Christ is the only thing that's worth building on. The only someone who's worth building upon. You can trust him. He won't leave you. He'll be there until the end. Father, as I teach this lesson on tonight, speak through these lips of clay, the words that you would have me to say, let it be all of you and none of me. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, strength and redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you is my prayer. And I, was, I say that, God bless you. I don't just say that loosely. I really want God to bless each and every one of you and to keep you in his will and in his care. I mean that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. God bless you. Let's go into the lesson. Christ, our only foundation. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build it their own. But let every man take heed how he build it their own. According to the grace. Now, now Paul is telling them, I have a I, wise master builder. He, he's a wise master because he, he builds churches. That's what he said. He's not what you call a carpenter for, per se. But Paul is the kind that went and built churches. And he has laid the foundation. He started the church. He starts churches. He builds churches. And he goes. And who's, whoever's there will take over. But when you build, take heed to how you build their own. Now he's laid the foundation. And you know that Christ is a foundation. That there's a, there's a natural foundation. That when you build a house, that's what you go with. You, at first, you look at your land. You look at what kind of land you have. And if the land may not be so, who I don't know, we might need to go to some other type of land. And so when you build that, get on that land, you know what's going on, and then you know what kind of foundation that needs to be laid. And you know what that solidness, be, the, the solidness, it needs to be able to build on something solid. So that when the wind comes, it won't shift. When this the storms come, it won't shift. It won't lean. It won't do. It'll be solid because it's built on a solid foundation. So Paul is saying, I've come and I laid the foundation. I've started the church. And my foundation, my foundation is Jesus. Hey, Tracy. My foundation is Jesus. So I want you all to also build on that foundation. But you, you got to understand, you can't put anything on God's foundation. You got to watch what you put in and on Christ's foundation. Like I say, you say it's the work, you say the building is the house of God, it's the sanctuary of God. You can't build anything, put whatever you feel like it on God's foundation. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is it. So if you're not building on Jesus, what are you building on? If you're not standing on Jesus, what are you standing on? On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Y'all remember that song? Yeah. 
solid Christ is solid. Just like the man that built the house. When he built it on sol a solidness, the wind came, didn't uh uh didn't know, didn't bother because the foundation was solid. When you have a solid foundation, stuff don't bother you like it bothers other folks. You don't get mad like the other folks because you build on a solid foundation. You trust in, in the solidness of your foundation. You know your foundation ain't going to shift. You know your foundation ain't going to move. You know your foundation ain't going to slide to the left, slide to the right. You know your foundation going to stay right there. Why? Because you built on Christ. That's why I understand when people are building their lives and their situations on Christ, why are you shaking? Why are you shaking? Why are you thinking, oh my goodness, am I going to fall? Am I going to go somewhere? What? No. If you build it on Christ, you don't have nothing to worry about. Because he's solid. He ain't going nowhere. He's going to be right there. But when you lay that foundation, you got to make sure you build on Christ and you putting the right stuff on the house. What's your work? What kind of work you doing? People sometimes build churches for their edification. So you can see them. Ooh, look what he did. Ooh, look what they did. No, look what God did. Because I didn't have the resources, but God blessed us with the resources to build it, so this is what God did. What I did, I built, I did, I, 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 uh-huh. So God didn't have nothing to do with nothing. Make sure you're building on the right foundation. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Uh-oh. Everybody's work. Everybody's work will be made manifest. Everybody's work is going to be judged. So you don't be standing up there and say, oh, see, you're not doing nothing. No, you need to be working. Don't be looking at what other folks ain't doing because God not coming back. Not, God not going to tell you about what they're doing. He's going to tell you about you. So you need to be working. You need to be building on what God needs you to build on. You need to build, if it's a solid foundation, then you need to build something solid on that solid foundation. Because you know if you build mess on a solid foundation, that mess will be gone and that solid foundation still be there. Because you built the wrong thing on it. You got to know just how to, I don't know, I'm not a carpenter. But I know when you see people, the guys that be building the houses, they, it's a certain order, certain way, certain how they do it. And they put the, they put the foundation down and then they put these, uh, the metal, and my dad told me what they were. But anyway, they put the little planks. The beams down and you know to hold up the foundation and all that good stuff and you build it up, whatever, whatever. And that's what we got to understand. You got to have everything in order when you're building a, a building. So that when you're building your life and you build it on Christ, a solid foundation, you can't do anything you want to with you. We're gonna get to that in a minute. I'm gonna show you that scripture. You can't do you this is my body. I can do whatever I want to with. No, just, mm -mm. This I can't. Mm -mm. You are the. You belong to God. You make sure you doing what you are supposed to do. With your body, okay. All right, here we go. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Uh oh. You got gold. What's gonna happen when it hit the heat? The heat. Silver. What's gonna happen when it hits the heat? The heat. Precious stones. Mm -hmm. Wood, hay, stubble. Wood, hay, and stubble burns quick. Are you building hay on the Lord? Are you living however you want to live? But you say, you doing what you want to do, but you say, go where you want to go, but you say, doing things you know God don't approve of, but you say. You put mess on the solid foundation. Now, you know of Jesus, but you don't know him. Because if you knew him, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. But don't nobody see me. God does. We keep forgetting that part. No, I don't see you. No, they don't see you. But God looking right at you. Yeah, he can see past the curtain. He can see past the roof. He can see in the dark. 
He the only person I know that can see in the dark. So whatever you think you hiding from, hey Nikki, don't hide. Hey Kenley, hey Clara, don't hide. Because you, you, you ain't hiding. You hiding from me, but you ain't hiding from God. Mm -hmm. So it says, if any man's work abide, which he had built thereon, he shall receive a reward. If you build what God has told you, you got the solid foundation of Christ, you live like he tell you to live, you be obedient, you do what's right, you go go to church, you fast, you pray, you do all these things, and then your work still be, you build some good stuff. You pray, you go obedient, you praise him and worship him, and these, and you're going to receive a reward because you did what you were supposed to do. You built it on gold and silver and precious stones. You gave God your best. You gave him the good stuff. So you're going to receive a reward. You're going to receive a reward and you're going to go on to heaven. Hey. He's going to tell you, well done. That good and faithful what? Servant. Yes, because you were working. But then here we go. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. He built, he built, his, built uh, on his foundation, he put wood, hay, and stubble. Burned up quick. Might take a little longer for the wood, but the wood going to burn up anyway because it's what? It's, it's not it's not solid. But this work going to be burnt up because he was acting like, acting like he was saved. But he was, he was working with wood. He was pretending. He was going through the motion. He knew what to do. She knew what to do. Come to church. You know how things are supposed to go. So you act like you worshiping the Lord. You act like you love the Lord. You act like you praising God. But mm -mm. your heart ain't nowhere near him. So you're going to suffer loss. Your works going to be burnt up but then it said but he himself shall be saved you're gonna be saved your words gonna be burnt up but you're gonna be saved but guess what you ain't gonna get away yet so as by fire that's where you're going you work semester you going to hell you didn't do what you supposed to do you didn't live right you weren't obedient, but you acted like. You came to church and looked like. That's why it's not always in a look. We try to look saved. We try to look holy. And we don't have what's, when, what's in our mind and in our hearts ain't got nothing to do with God. What we're doing ain't got nothing to do with God. Where we going? Ain't got nothing to do with God. But then we get up at church on Sunday. Oh. And God looking like, who is that? Y'all know him? Lord I, Lord, I thought you knew. No. Mm -mm. He look like somebody I know, but I'm, mm -mm. They, they playing too much. Don't play. Because it said, you will be saved. Good evening, Sister Norfolk. But you're going to go to hell. You're just going to be saved just enough for you to feel that fire and brimstone. And whether they be whipping, weeping and gnashing the teeth. Uh, uh, ooh. Can you imagine? You know how we had that, that summer, that hot moment? Can you imagine that every day intensified for the rest of your life? So let's get it together. So you slipping and you're not doing what you need to be doing. Say, so God, fix me. Help me, Lord. Help me get it right. Help me keep it right. God, I got to stay right. Because I want to go back home with you. Woo! I got it. It said, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. You are God's temple. This is God's body. This, this is God's temple. So when you mess, mess this up, you're messing up God. He 
made you. He made you in the likeness and the, in the image and in the likeness. So you need to take care of this body. Watch how you treat it. Let me tell you something. If you have insurance, if you don't have insurance, find somebody. Take care of you. Go to your doctor. See what's going on with you. Well, I don't trust that. I believe God wouldn't have put them here. I know they ain't all where they need to be, but they're here for a reason. Luke was a physician. If, if the Lord had a, a physician on his team, what's wrong with you? Hey, Sister Goodson. Hmm? So we're going to take it and say, Know ye not that you are the temple of God. You are God's temple. He inhabits the praise of his people. Wait a minute. If he had, wait, we're in his temple and he inhabits the praise. So that means he's dwelling in us. So we got to watch what we put in us. Uh oh. Ooh, and I mean that on every level. So you got to watch who you be with as well. Transferring demons. Hmm. And the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now listen. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Can you, do you really, if, do you want to defile the temple, mess up, do all kind of stuff, do whatever, however, whenever, with whoever? You want to do that to God? Because when you messing up yourself, you messing up God, so to speak. You saying you, God didn't make you good enough, so you got to do some extra stuff. Oh, I can do what I want to. I can say what I want to. I can go where I want. I can do what I, I can. Okay. That's what you're going to build on God's holy foundation. That's what you're going to do with God's temple. So you got to take care of this. You got to take care of you. It said, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? Wait. Wait a minute. So what you telling me is, if God's temple is, if God is holy, and you are God's temple, you got to be holy. I didn't say that's right here. I read it. But I didn't say it. I didn't write it. It says, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are. Now if God is holy. And we are representing God. He wants us to be what holy. Be ye holy for I am holy. Why are you trying to make fix that. And make it something else. It is what it is. Quit trying to fix God's word. So it will make you comfortable. God's word does not make you comfortable. If you are not doing. If you are not doing what you are supposed to. God's word should make you. Ooh wait a minute. Hold up. I need you to do better. If you don't feel you, you know, you looking at what you not you you looking at what you should be doing is like I'll be I got time. No, you don't. I know a lot of people said I got time. Woke up pers not reality, but well woke up in the funeral home. Cause they thought they had time. Woke up in judgment. Because they thought they had time. Don't ever say, I got time. You better you better seek God now. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while, it is, while he is near. Because he's not going to be able to be found. And he's not going to be near. So you better find God like you're supposed to now. Quit faking and shaking. Don't talk about fake it till you make it. Don't do it. Because you might not make it. So go ahead and be for real. And do what you need to do for Christ. Because he is our only foundation. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. Let him become a fool that he may be wise. Let me read that again. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. 
Let him become a fool that he may be wise. You ain't smart enough. You ain't wise enough. You don't know nothing. You know what God allows you to know. So as far as God is concerned, don't act like you got it. Don't act like you know it all. You need to act like you don't know when it comes to God. Say, if you think you smart, you need to cool it down. You need to calm down and go sit down somewhere. Because when it comes to God, you better sit yourself over there in the corner and be quiet. A lot of y'all can attest to this fact. You remember back in the day when you old grandmama house on this with my, my grandmother or my parents. Your parents said when the when the <laughs> when the storm started, when the thunder when it was happening and the lightning, what they tell you, they turn off the TV, turn off the lights, tell you, shh, God's working. You better not say nothing either. You might get popped. But damn it. The Lord work with you. Now you don't care. Lord be working you like, hmm, uh, hmm, I'm on my phone. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, look, mm, okay, yeah, okay. They, you, they couldn't use the phone. Get out the phone. Tell them bye. You tell them call back later. They wouldn't answer the phone. Mm, throw cover over teeth. That's a new one, Trace. I ain't think. Oh, Lord. That's a new one. I ain't never heard of that one. <laughs> they threw the cover over the teeth. Jesus. They just turned it off. My, okay. But anyway, that's, that's, that's serious. Okay. <laughs> but you got to become humble. Because God is bigger than you. God is wiser than you. God is smarter than you. He can bust your wig anytime he wants to. So don't ever think you smart enough to outsmart God. You ain't that baby. You a drop in the bucket when it come to God. I mean a little small bucket and them big old buckets. That's one. So understand that you need to humble yourself like Ignacio said. Humble yourself. Become like you don't know nothing. Say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm at your disposal. God, what you want me to do? God, how you want me to say? What you going to do? Lord, talk to me. I don't want to feel like I lost my mind. So we got to do what we need to do and how we need to do it. You better become humble. Because don't ever say, God made me humble. Don't, uh-uh. Baby, cheering. Cheering, baby. Humble yourself. Don't ask the Lord to humble you, baby. He will broke you down. Not break. He will broke you down. And you be like, no, 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 you told me to humble you. Because see, God sometimes take drastic measures to humble you. Well, all you can do is drop to your knees. So just go on and do it yourself. You have the ability to humble yourself. You do. I'm going to tell you that. You have the ability to humble yourself. And when God says, okay, they humbled you, then he'll catch it and keep you there. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Now, the wisdom of this, these folks think because they got a bunch of letters behind their name. They smart. They may be, but they ain't got nothing. They ain't nothing compared to God. Now, Paul was one of those smart folk. He could have said... You see all this education I got? I know more than God. He could have he easily said that. He spoke 13 languages, seven fluently. He was educated by the highest educators. He sat at the feet of Gamaliel. He was one of the smart boys back in that day. And he could have said, oh, look here, my name is, well, it was Saul, but it's Paul now. I am the top dog now. What? I can I am smarter than all of y'all. So what y'all need to do. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Paul say, I see y'all what I did. But it's nothing but dung to me. It's mm -mm, this that means it means nothing. All that education is nothing compared to God. All what I did don't mean nothing. 
I live for Christ. I don't want to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all I want to know. I know a whole bunch of stuff, but the only thing that's important to me is to know Jesus and him crucified. I don't care how many schools I done went to. It don't mean nothing to me. I can lose all of this stuff. It don't mean nothing to me. But I don't want God to go nowhere. Because I just know him as I know him. And that means the world to me. He said he taken the wise in their own craftiness. When folks think they smart. And think they got it made. And think they going to get by God. God says no you ain't finna get by me. Where you think you're going? What you think you're going to do? You think you're smarter than me? Really? And these folks think they got it all figured out. Mm-hmm. Think they're going to set this, going to take this, going to do it. God switch up on them and, 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 and use their own thing. Use their own craftiness. Own foolishness. And throw it black in their face like that. Then they try to blame people. No, that was God. Or oh, if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't be. No, no, no. That was God. See, you tried to mess with me, one of God's children, and God don't like that. Okay. So you got to make sure that you humble yourself. That scripture, if my people. We still not humbling ourselves. And we kind of praying. It depends on what they will seek his face. Turn from my wicked ways. We just, we can't get that we can't get to the thing. We can't get to the thing. Then we'll like, we can't get to that. Because we won't humble. We won't pray. We won't seek and we won't turn. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. The thoughts, the, I don't care how smart you think you are. You are vain. We are nothing compared to God. We're, he loves us, but when it comes to weighing situations, our mind is, is only can go so far. God knows everything. About everything. About everybody. About everything. God knows everything about everything that knows about everything that's everything's everything. And he knows everybody. He could number the hairs, the number of hairs on your head. He knows how many hairs all of us have. He knows how many grains of sea, sea, sand there is. You want to go out there and try to count them? No. God knows it's like when you think you're smart, you're not. You might be smarter than someone someone here. You say, oh, I'm smarter than them. That's nice. But you'll never be smarter than God. Never, ever. No, never. No, never. No, never. So the thoughts of the wise, even though they think they're smart, God says you're not. You don't even compare to me. Not even compare. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Don't glory in yourself. Don't glory in me. It's okay to admire people, yes. We can admire people. We can look to people for role models, but don't get caught up. Oh. Oh. They are my world. Oh, what would I do if anything happened to them? Oh my God. What would you do? Okay, you be sad. You be hurt. But would you leave God? Did you glory in God or did you glory in them? Did you glory in God or did you glory in Him? Do you glory in God or do you glory in her? Where does your glory lie? Where is your foundation? What are you building on that foundation? What kind of life are you building 
as you are in Christ? What kind of life are you living that you say you're in Christ? How does your life measure up to Christ? And this is what I mean, because you say, oh, I'm nothing. Out there. Uh -huh. That's what, yeah, that's what you want to say. You are nothing, yes. But what I mean is when you're living according to the, the word of God, where do you measure up? Are you even attempting? Are you, I'm trying, I'm doing the best I can. Why are you doing the best you can? What is the best you can? When people say that, they're really not doing much. Because if you're doing the best you can, you're not doing the best. You're not even trying. Because when you're doing the best that you can, you're giving God your all. And when you say, when you say you're doing the best you can, you're not. But when you're doing the best you can, I can see it. Folks that say it ain't doing it. Folks that's doing it ain't saying it. You can see it. Let your light so shine. Let your works go forth. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works. Wait. And by them seeing what you're doing will glorify God on your behalf. I'm paraphrasing. Will glorify God because of the way you're working. Now, when they see you working, who do, who do they glorify? Are you glorifying God by what you do? Or are you glorifying, glorifying Uncle Junior? Satan. You glorifying him? Or are you glorifying God? Hmm. Whether Paulus, I'm sorry, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Now, because these things are yours, you have your own, what you do. You, we all have our ministry. We all do it different. We all, whatever. I take this platform and I share with you. I don't share with you to be selfish. Tracy can take, she takes some of my material. What? Some of y'all take some of my material. I don't have a problem with that. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. I'm here to teach, but I'm here to help. That's what teachers need to be. That, we do teachers in the in the circular secular world. They secular world. They help each other. If that's wait a minute, that looks like a, that sounds like I like the way you did that. I want to borrow that. Fine. That's how we do. That's how I'm doing this. You want to borrow? Fine. If God that God said this is my word, but I want you to share. If I'm helping you, why not? And y'all be helping me. Y'all be putting your little comments out like, yeah. You know, I don't think I know it all. No. I know a lot, but I don't know it all. But when it comes to this word, pretty much can't miss me. You know, you might miss me on some other stuff, but not the word. Okay. So, but that's what we want to do. We want to build on. We want to help each other. We want to encourage each other. <laughs> okay. So, start. <laughs> That we want to help each other. We want to encourage each other. We want to build each other up. That's what this is about. It's not about me. It's about you. Okay. It said, and ye are Christ. And Christ is God's. If we belong to, if Christ, Christ belong to God, we belong to God, what? We got to act like we belong to God. We got to walk like we belong to God. We got to talk like we belong to God. Because we're building on Christ. Our only foundation. He's it. What you trying to build on something else for? You build on weak weakness and weak craziness. And you, mm -mm. And you want to go somewhere. You want to build something. You think it's going to work. It's going to be leaning by the time you get try to get the building together. And it's going to fall before you got it going on. So make sure that you're building your life on Christ's foundation. The only foundation. And I'm going to say it again. What are you building? What are you putting on that foundation? Are you putting holiness or messiness?
keep on building. We'll build good stuff. Okay? Let's go to the practical points. Jesus Christ is the only foundation for all we teach and do. You hear that? He's the only foundation. If I'm talking about the word of God, why am I talking? All I'm supposed to be talking about is Christ. I'm talking about the word of God. Now, I can use some natural things, which I do, to explain or help you understand the word of God. But when I'm going down a rabbit trail, a dog trail, a expedition, a discovery channel, I mean, what? What? I mean, okay, it, what? It, what? And you end up more confused than you were to be, and you're like, what? In the, no. Teach the word. Explain the word. Our churches, our homes, our lives must be built on Jesus Christ alone to last. You ever heard that song? Only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you be, when you build Christ on your foundation, when you keep building on Christ, it's gonna last. Your life will last when you build on Christ. You can go through things better when you build your foundation. When your foundation is Christ and you build on that. You build and you put in trust, faith, love, joy, holiness, kindness, gentleness. This is what you're building on Christ, the foundation. Because that's what he's made of. That's what he is. So if we're building on Christ, then we got to build what's on Christ. He is holy, so we have to be holy. You can't say you belong to God and unholy. That don't work. You can't say you're God's child and you do whatever. God understands my heart. That's why you're on your way to hell, because he understands your heart. Because mm -hmm. ain't nothing good in your heart. If you want to do what you want to do, why? Are you being obedient to God by doing what you want to do? I'm going to do me. Okay, doing you. Go ahead. I. Right. You better put Jesus in there somewhere and quit doing you and do Jesus. Mm hmm. Dr. Rainey. Doing you is killing you. That's what he said. Do Jesus. And you'll be all right. God protects the church from those who would defile it, for it is it's his holy temple. God protects the church from those who would defile it. Mm hmm. He protects his church. Does God protect your church from the crazy people? Because when folks that ain't connected to God, when they can comfortably sit in your church and act up and aren't afraid of being a fool, what's really going on? When, when folks can come in your church because the spirit is so thick, they look. Say, well, I can't do nothing here because I don't know what's going to happen. They're going to get me. And they feel like you like, you coming in there with that crazy spirit. And folks, the saints pick up on your spirit and start praying. And then you like, oh, wait, nah, I just, yeah, you got to leave. Because God will not allow evil spirits to come in and defile, contaminate, destroy, stank up. His church. Faithfulness to God's word seems foolish to those who do not believe. It's Christ. You going to church again? Yep. You going to Bible study again? Yep. Don't you read your Bible every day? Yep. Well, why are you going to Bible study to learn? I thought you knew everything. Oh, it's something new. You need to come with me. No, I can't do that church. I will. Let me know. Faithfulness to God's word. Mm. Believers may honor leaders for their service, but worship. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, let me let me let me go back and read this again. That that last part caught my eye, and I almost lost it. Okay, it said believers may honor leaders for their service. That's okay, but worship belongs to God alone. Don't worship your leader. Your leader is not God. 
Your leader did not die for you. Worship belongs to God and God only. You can honor your leader. You can honor your pastor. You it's okay. They have anniversaries, appreciation. But don't. Mm, we honor you, O oh great one. We bless your name, O oh great. Wait a minute. Whoa. And then some of these preachers thank their God. Got the folks honoring them and bowing down to them and doing this and that. Jesus didn't even do that. What makes you, what gives you the right? Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. What, what are you doing? You represent Jesus, but you act in opposite? Uh oh, hear your word, uh, Ignacio. Unity in God's kingdom is only possible through Christ. Unity in God's kingdom is only possible through Christ. We got to be, if you want to be unified, it's got to be Christ. That's why some churches are all over the map because they're not, they not in Christ. They're not working through Christ. They're doing their own thing. They have their own opinion, their own way. So it's not unified. There's no unity because there's no love. There's no unity because there's no God. There's no unity because everybody doing their own thing, going their own way, doing whatever, however, whenever, who, to whoever. But when you are in God, when we work together, when we mind the same things, when we are with one accord, not on. With one accord, not on. On, anybody, one person be on one accord. With one accord in a group. We have to be on the same page. If you're not on the same page, shh, talk to the pastor. One on one. We don't, you don't, don't be putting nothing in the pot that don't belong in the pot. If you're cooking greens, tomatoes don't belong in the greens. Quit throwing the tomatoes in the greens. If you're cooking a peach cobbler, carrots don't belong in the peach cobbler. Quit throwing carrots in the cobbler. If you don't have nothing good to add, you take, take it to the pastor. Take it to the chairman. Who's ever in charge of the meeting. Take it to them one-on-one. -on -one. Hush your mouth. That's why you having so many problems because you keep starting trouble. I told y'all, God's trouble, God troubles trouble. You keep on acting up, God gonna act up on you. So make sure if there's in the division, what I told you about the division. God don't like division. No, he don't like one that sold this card. The solid foundation is Christ. No other foundation you, you need to be building on. And you need to know what you need to build on. And it should be a holy life that you're building on God's foundation. He's there. You're not going to put nothing unholy. Nothing unholy. On Christ's holy foundation okay Christ our only foundation I'm gonna say it again on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand I don't want to stand on nothing else I don't want nothing else to hold me but Jesus Christ he's a true foundation Solid foundation. Amen. Amen. I hope I said something that can give you more strength to carry on, that helped you, that builds you up, and it gives you the strength to keep on running and see what the end's going to be. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. And as I said, 
we are going to um, expand the ministry so that I'm going to be half here. They, they said you had to have so many followers, so many subscribers on YouTube. But apparently they changed that rule. And so now I, I set it up where I'll be able to uh, teach a couple of Tuesdays. I'm going to split it between Facebook Live and YouTube Live. I can go live, y'all. So, if y'all want to meet me over there, I'm just going to be for a few minutes. I'm going to be on YouTube Live at 8.15. And, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to be there long. I'm just going to, you know, say hey and say when I'll be there. But, you know, I'll uh, let y'all know. So, those of you who want to go, it's the same page. Sunday School Live with Pastor Benita Vance on YouTube. Same page name. So, just go on over there if you want to and meet me. And I'll see you. It's my, my first experience. So, I don't know. We, we're just going to. Figure it out together. <laughs> okay. All right. God bless you. God keep you. Is my prayer. Some of y'all, if you choose, I'll see you in a few minutes. I say I'll see the rest of y'all. I'll see you Sunday or next Tuesday. All right. God bless and God keep you. Is my prayer. Until next time. All right.